Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, welcome to the crew. We are glad to have you. Do you need a refrigerator in order to go on long-term travel or expeditions? That's the question today. Now let me tell you, we don't have a refrigerator. We haven't for a long time. The first time I went down to Baja a couple of decades ago, we had no refrigeration whatsoever. I wanted to try that again recently. We went all the way down to Cabo San Lucas and back 17 days without a cooler or refrigeration and it worked fine. Do you need it? Question mark. Now, many of our members will tell you a refrigerator is one of the upgrades that will have the greatest impact on your quality of life if you are going on long-term travel and for some it's required. For example, my wife has refrigerated medicine that she needs to keep cool. We had to ship it down to Cabo San Lucas so that she had it when we got there. So for many people, having refrigeration goes beyond just convenience. Now, one of the reasons we look to Australia for their overlanding, or as they put it, SUV touring experience and equipment is because of the vast distance between civilized locations. When they're out in the middle of no place, when they're in the outback, they have to be completely self-reliant. I've had the good fortune to go down a few times and meet with the overland bound Queensland region. Hi Lewis, hi Blake. And when we're talking, it's a foregone conclusion. Mike, what are you gonna do? You need refrigeration. And they have no issue spending quite a bit of money on that one piece of equipment. Now we're gonna jump right into this interview. We're talking to a company called Dometic. They've been making refrigeration gear for a really long time. They've got some new technology we're gonna learn about. And again, this isn't a paid spot. We do four things on this channel. We do gear reviews, we do rig walk arounds, we interview our Overland Bound members because there's such a vast amount of knowledge within the community. And we do our own trip videos because we wanna inspire you about different locations, different types of trips so that you can get ideas about what's right for your next great adventure. Now, if you like what you see, of course, subscribe. It really does help us out. And until next time, outfit, explore, and enjoy the video. Hey everybody, uh, thank you for listening and joining us today. You guys know we went to Baja, we did 17 days in Baja, and we didn't even have a cooler. We just wanted to prove we could do it. But as a result of that experience, now we're kicking the tires on refrigeration. And so we came by Dometic and Reed, thank you for taking some time with Absolutely. us. You're a product manager with Dometic. Yep, mobile and, phone product manager. Yeah, and yep. we've been chatting. Why don't we talk about a little bit about your history of, as a company, yeah. and then we'll get into talking about a couple of the products that you Absolutely. have here today. Cool. So Dometic's been around since the early 1900s. Yeah. Um, we actually trace our roots back to the invention of the absorption refrigeration technology, uh -huh. which is keeping things cold with heat. So we still make them today in RVs. Yeah. Um, and then for our CFXs, we go back about 30 years with these guys. And not only not only RV, but marine as well, is that right? Yep, RV, yeah. marine, uh, even semi-trucks. Cool. Sure. Lodging in some really nice hotels, you have products there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. At this expo, you guys are focusing on the adventure community now. Absolutely. Um, Tell us about that and what you guys have developed and, and let's let's show people what you got. We want to get people away from using ice. We don't want any more soggy sandwiches rolling around in the bottom of that cooler. I don't know what you're talking we, about. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, from your Mexico trip. But we, we want to get rid of the, you know, soggy bologna sandwich yep. mixed with a little bit of bread and maybe some banana in there. We want to get rid of that. Yeah. So biggest thing is no ice ever. Maybe for your buddy who ran out of uh, ice who's got a Yeti because you can uh -huh. make ice with these things too. Okay. We can uh, refrigerate or freeze down to negative seven. So it's kind of a deep freeze. Okay. You can do that with each uh, cooler, the single zones. So you can make them a freezer or a fridge. These CFXs are tested in Australia. We know okay. that overlanding is really demanding. You're bouncing around on the roads, you're slamming the lids, 
Maybe yep. they're in the back of a pickup, bouncing around. That's where we've done all our testing. I was going to ask you, I mean, in our travels, we are hammering the heck out of anything that's in the rig. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's suspension. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's a rack system yeah. or refrigerator. It's going to get beat up. And so I'm, I'd yeah. like to hear more about that. Absolutely. So we've got um, all these corners are reinforced because we know that's really where stuff's going to yep. hit. We've got stainless steel hinges, so you're not going to have a problem with the lid. And with this, uh, the ABS construction, it's extremely durable. I have mm -hmm. never seen one that's been cracked so far. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. So I roll in a, in an automatic. It's an old eighty. Um, I don't yet have any like trickle charge solar or anything like that. So a big concern for me is that I'm going to wake up with that automatic, you know, 900 miles down into Baja and have a dead battery. Do you guys have any safeguards that safeguard the, you know, the battery if you got a refrigerator plugged in? And yeah, tell me about that. Absolutely. Actually, in my truck, my FJ60, I got one battery. So yeah, I an FJ60. To start. Yeah, man. We have to talk about that later. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. So, but we have a battery protection system built in. So okay. what this does is the cooler will sense what the voltage of the power supply is. Yeah. Uh, in that case, for me and you, it's our starter batteries. Yep. And we want to make sure, uh, you know, Sunday morning when we're packing up, going home for the weekend, that the car starts. Yeah. So what it'll do is it'll sense the voltage, it'll shut off when it feels the voltage gets too low, mm -hmm. and then it saves your car battery. Okay. Um, there's different levels. You can adjust it to high, medium, low. I was going to ask you if you have any control over the, exactly. the shutoff tolerance, and yeah. you're saying you yep. do. And right okay. on the display here, or through the Wi-Fi app, yeah. um, you can change that setting. Okay. Um, so if you have it on high, it's going to cut off at a higher voltage. Mm -hmm. If you've got it on low, it'll cut off at a lower voltage. You can change the temp. If you've got dual compartments, you can shut one compartment off, leave the other one got on. It. If you're going to run a single battery, we recommend a deep cycle starter battery. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. An yeah, AGM. Um, hey, I see. I mean, I see a wide variety of uh, of products here. So it looks like you have a broad product range. Yeah, we do. Um, tell me about that. I mean, the different sizes and yeah, we we pride ourselves in having kind of the most choice in size out of anyone out there. Um, yeah, we've got everything down to a 28 quart up to a 95 quart dual zone. Yeah. So something for everyone. So if you're fitting under a tonneau cover in a Tacoma or something, you're going to want uh, one of our 35s, which is a really low profile. Mm -hmm. If you don't care about that too much and you want to take up a lot of space in the back of your 4Runner, for example, mm -hmm. the 65 would be a nice choice. It's nice and tall with a uh, relatively small footprint, so you can get a lot yeah. of bang for your buck. Cool. Um, but yeah, so car space, how many people, and how long are you going for? Those are kind of the three things that you want. You got to know up front in order to select the right Yeah. Cooler. On average, we draw energy consumptions about one amp hour per hour. Okay. Uh, wow. So it's it's really low. Yeah. Obviously, if you're going yeah. bigger, you're going to draw a little more. If you're going smaller, it'll draw a little less. Right. So that's kind of the rule of thumb we go with. Right. So yeah. I mean, you know, just to mention the the uh, yes, there are electric coolers out there. They're not the same. Right. <laughs> this is a true fridge and deep freezer. So, right. Yeah. Right. This now, is does a this negative have negative seven Fahrenheit? Does this have freezing capability as well in this size? Absolutely. Oh, All, cool. Every single uh, CFX that we sell yeah. has uh, fridge or deep freezing capabilities. Right on. Seven. Okay, yeah. that's groovy. Yeah. Um, so you can you can make ice if you want. Let's yeah. check out the let's, 75. Yeah, let's, let's check it out over here. Okay. So this has uh, it's a true dual zone. So we've got two independently controlled zones. Uh, right now, one side's got ice cream sandwiches in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we've got the other side, I think, set to fridge. So okay. this is a really badass product. You mm -hmm. can get the best of both worlds with this. You get a freezer, a fridge, or you can make them both freeze or both fridge. It's up to you. Uh, personally, I've got this one in the back of the FJ. Uh -huh. uh, I keep one side for beers and one side for food. Yeah. It works well. Beers, yeah. drinks, steaks, you know, uh -huh. stuff that's heavy and you don't care about getting jostled around, I put it on right. one side. And then the other side, I kind of use like a... Um, pantry almost for like bread, veggies, fruit, stuff like that. Okay, so you were mentioning um, when we were looking at the smaller unit uh, that it is low power consumption. Um, if you're going to compare the two, are they both low power consumption and how does that work? Yeah, um, they both have really low, low power consumption. This yeah. one's going to be a little more because it's pushing more gas around in the evaporation uh, co uh, coils. Yeah. But what makes a Dometic more power, uh, more energy efficient than other models is, uh, for one, we make our own compressor. 
Uh -huh. And by doing that, we can use a lot of new technology that we've developed to put into there. So Got one it. of them is called VMSO2, Variable mm -hmm. Motor Speed Optimization. I know mm -hmm. it sounds like a mouthful, but mm -hmm. pretty much what it does is um, some compressors are always on or they're always off. There's, right. It's, it's either or, it's binary. Right. Um, so this would be like driving down the highway. You slam the gas on and then you let off. And then you slam the <laughs> gas on and you let off. That's no way right. to drive. Same thing with the cooler. That's no Hard way on to parts, cool. burns gas. Yeah, there you go. Um, so what ours does is just like you drive on the highway. You hit the gas and you get up to speed and you let off. And yeah. you maintain that, that speed. Got it's it. a very similar to what our compressor does. Um, so it'll start hard, draw the temp down, and then mm -hmm. as the temp comes down, it'll bleed off a little bit. Got it. And what that does is it, um, for one, it is really energy efficient, mm -hmm. and two is it really extends the life of the compressor. So before we before we before we take off, is there anything else that people should consider either about Dometic or about um, your cooler, your product line, or about you know? Power coolers in general. What, yeah. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. So, for those looking to take the jump from uh, a, a Yeti or similar product like that, another uh, or no cooler, or no cooler, <laughs> exactly. Um, I know it could be a big jump, but one of the, uh, some of the things to remember are um, you don't have to take up any space in here with ice. Yeah. And if you look, you've got to put in about two thirds of that space when you're using one of those premium ice coolers with ice. Yep. That takes up a lot of space, mm -hmm. that means less food, less drinks, and it also means more weight. So what a lot of people don't realize is that if you're using a you know, uh, 60 quart normal ice cooler, you can downsize a lot because you don't need to waste that space with ice. Yeah, it's funny, I, I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So you can downsize, you gain space in your truck or your vehicle, and of course, no more soggy sandwiches. Right. Cool. Well, right on. Yeah. Hey, Reed, thanks a lot for taking Absolutely. the time and thanks talking to us. By. Thanks for sharing the Appreciate products. It.